All right, welcome back. So hopefully you've already seen our video and feel pretty comfortable about the, with the basics of confidence intervals, calculating at least a Z confidence interval, that kind of thing. All right, so just summing up what we've seen before, we've got the basic format of a confidence interval is our point estimate plus or minus the margin of error, where our margin of error is made up of your critical value times the standard error. All right, so kind of just putting all that in shorthand, here is, uh, here's what we're looking at. All right, so we've looked at how do I make a confidence interval under the assumptions of essential limit theorem, where I'm saying I'm using x bar to estimate mu, right, and I'm, we're saying we can assume normality because we know sigma and our sample size is big there in most cases. All right, then we built this confidence interval form. All right, so that's where we are so far. So here we've got a simple example of constructing a, a Z confidence interval. All right, we're assuming normal. We know sigma 95%, your basic confidence interval. So we got this sample of 10 yields a sample mean of 64.46. We have our sample standard deviation. We don't really need that because we know sigma. All right, then our critical value. So the, the only tricky part, really, of, of calculating confidence intervals is just making sure I use the right critical value. All right, so, so you can take a minute to just make sure you know how to do these calculations. All right, that shouldn't be the hard part. Again, just using the right critical value is the important Okay, so let's think about the behavior of this interval in relation to that confidence level All right, and, the, and the size of this interval. All right, remember, precision is a big thing to us when we're estimating. We can think about the precision of a confidence interval as how wide is this interval. Right Now we know, in general, the smaller the interval, the more precise that is, and probably the more useful to our purposes a smaller interval is going to be. All right, so here we had a 95% confidence interval using this critical value. Right, and the length of this interval, so here's our lower limit, here's our upper limit, the length of this interval was 1.24, and our units there were inches. In general, we could think about the length of an interval, right, the entire length of this interval, our point estimate's right in the middle, we add the margin of error to get to our upper limit, we subtract the margin of error to get to our lower limit, so this entire interval is twice the margin of error. Right, so here's if we wanted to look at that in, in formula form. Right, two times the margin of error. Margin of error is made up of your critical value times your standard error. All right, so maybe you're thinking, well, why, why do we always seem to be making 95% confidence intervals? We already know we can make any confidence level we want. Well, we'll never be 100% confident in our answer. Right, but maybe you're thinking, well, why would we ever want to be 95% confident when we could be, say, 99% confident. All right, what's going to happen there? Well, our confidence level, we know we find our critical value based on our confidence level. All right, so what happens to that critical value? It's going to change. We're going to keep everything else constant. But what happens to that critical value? So here my confidence level is going from 95 to 99. It's getting bigger. Okay, so my confidence level is getting bigger. As your confidence level gets bigger, what happens to your critical value? Well, 95, we used 1.96. And if you'll remember, 99, we use 2.575. Okay, so as my confidence level is going up, my critical value is going up. If my critical value is getting bigger, the entire margin of error is going to get bigger. Therefore, the interval width or interval length is going to get bigger. Okay, so going, keeping everything constant, going from a 95% confidence interval, we had a length of 1.24 inches. A 99% confidence interval, same sample, same data, we went to 1.63 inches. It got bigger. And that makes sense, because remember what we're trying to do is capture our parameter of interest with this interval. If I want to be more confident that I'm going to capture something, right? Like if I'm, 
if I want to be more confident, I'm going to catch a fish or whatever, just cast a wider net, right? So if we make this interval bigger, we're more confident that we're going to capture what we we're looking for. But when we think about interval size and precision, it looks like keeping everything constant. Yes, I'm more confident in my answer, but this interval is not as precise, right? In other words, it may not be so useful. So think about, so again, thinking back to the question, well, why would we ever want to be 95% confident when I could be 99% confident? Well, or why not just be, take that question even further, why not just be 99.999? percent confident. Well, if I wanted to be very, very, very confident in my answer, arbitrarily large confidence level, well that would mean that my interval would be so big it would be unusable, it would be useless because it's not precise. Alright, so what else can we do? Well, let's think about some of the other relationships. So we know and just the, the ones that we use a lot, 90, 95, 99, right, we see what's happening here. Right, our, our critical value is getting bigger as our confidence level is getting bigger. So our confidence level, we can say, has a direct relationship with the margin of error and therefore the interval length. So what are some other factors in our margin of error? Well, we know how this behaves. Right? Sigma is a constant at this point because it's a population parameter right it doesn't change so sigma is a constant so what else could change your sample size right now we already know that in general it seems like bigger samples give us more precise estimates so does that hold with the confidence interval well think about if I make this value of n bigger hold everything else constant, as n gets bigger, as I'm dividing by a bigger and bigger number, right, that means as n gets bigger, dividing by a bigger and bigger number, my standard error is going to get smaller. Multiplying a smaller number by the critical value, that means my margin of error is going to get smaller. That means my entire interval width is going to get smaller. All right, so remember the entire width of your interval is twice the margin of error. So let's think about all these different factors. Now, at this point, since we're doing z intervals, we're saying sigma is always fixed. All right, but if I, we looked at first, what if I want to raise my confidence level? Well, your interval is going to get bigger. Right? A bigger interval is not always more useful. So what can we do? to make our interval get smaller or more precise, well, we can raise our sample size. All right, the next question we're going to think about, well, what if I have an interval in mind that I want? Well, I can set a confidence level, and I can find the sample size that I need to achieve that. All right, that's what we're going to think about here. So in or if I have an interval width or margin of error that I'm interested in, and I want to maintain a certain confidence level, I can take that margin of error part of the formula, solve it for n, and I can find the sample size I need to achieve the interval that I want. Now one thing to remember about this is we always want to round n up to our next whole number to maintain the, uh, the margin of error that we're looking for. So let's look at an example of the, using this. All right, so remember back to our example we started with. We're assuming these heights of people are normally distributed and the population standard deviation of one. So say we weren't happy with our results, all right, but we, we want to be 95% confident. We want to make an interval where we're 95% confident, but we want it to be, the, the width here, to be at most one inch. Right, now we know the relationship between interval width and margin of error, so saying we want an interval width or interval length of one inch is like saying 
we want margin of error of half an inch. Now that's important because remember what the formula calls for, not interval width, but it calls for margin of error in the denominator. All right, so we want an interval width of one inch or margin of error of a half an inch. So I take that formula, I plug in, all right, now we know 1.96, Right, that corresponds to the 95% confidence interval. The, this 1 is our value of sigma. 0.5 is our margin of error that we're looking for. All right, do the math. We come up with 15.37. Now let's think about reporting that answer. Well, 15.37 doesn't make sense as a sample size. Right? I can't, I can't take a sample of 15.37 people. So it makes intuitive sense that we round when we come up with a, a decimal we round to a whole number for our sample size now normally you would round 15.37 to just 15 but if I round down that's gonna make my interval width a little bit more than what I was looking for if I round down now remember we're looking for at most one inch so even though this is 15.37 I when I'm working with sample sizes, I always want to round up. So here, if I were to report this answer, I would report it as 16. All right, so hope that was helpful for you guys and you know a little bit more about how confidence intervals behave now. See you next time.